Hello everybody, my name is Jared Passy and I'm with LotsOfPips.com and I'm here to teach you about what the Forex market is. So we're going to do a video on the intro to Forex. What it is, understanding it, what's it all about, um, before you decide to do anything rash. <laughs> Alright, let's start out with a definition. Okay, The Forex is actually kind of an acronym for the foreign exchange currency market. Uh, it consists of a worldwide network of thousands of banks trading back and forth the values of different currencies. The world's first completely ex electronic exchange. That means that there's no paper sitting anywhere tracking these things. It's all electronic and it's all hap it all happens digitally. Um, transactions are processed in seconds because of the electronic exchange. Um, it is the world's largest, most liquid market. All profits are settled in cash, uh, so you don't have to, it's not stocks or bonds or anything you're ending up with. You're ending up with um, with cash, with money. All right. Uh, what is traded? Um, well, in the Forex market, you're not trading on an individual item like the value of a stock or an item or, or a company. You're trading on the fluctuations between the exchange rates of two currencies two different pairs, or two different currencies, called a currency pair. Um, for instance, the US dollar has a value, and it is valued against other currencies, like the Euro. So we would call that the Euro-US is one of the currency pairs that we trade. As one currency goes up in value, the other one drops. And that's the fluctuation that we're going to trade. We're going to anticipate which one's going to increase and which one's going to decrease. All right. As the US dollar drops, then the Euro will increase. We have six major pairs to trade. The Euro US is the one we just showed you. These are called the majors. There are hundreds of pairs. You can cross connect any pair out there. But these are the main ones that control or are controlled by most of the markets in the world. Uh, the pound dollar, the Aussie dollar, the Swiss franc against the dollar, the Japanese yen against the US dollar, and the Canadian against the US dollar. These are considered the majors. The US is basically considered the standard that all these currencies are hold up against or are measured against. Um, who trades the Forex market? Well, first of all, the banks trade it. The banks are tracking at the fluctuations and trading on the changes in the Forex market. Uh, non-stop um, corporations. Many companies uh, trade foreign currencies as well. Chrysler uh, several years ago reported that they made more money trading foreign currency than they did making cars. Um, individuals. Warren Buffett uh, is a big-time investor in the foreign currency market as, as many others are and countries. Countries trade um, to affect their own markets and to um, profit from it. Uh, let's take a look at uh, what actually affects the market. Uh, money flows in and out of different countries as a daily result of economic factors such as uh, jobs, employment rates, any kind of economic status of a country can affect the currency value for that country as it relates to other currencies. Um, these are some of the news announcements that we get that affect the the currency directly, um, interest rate changes, um, import and export rates, and speculative trading. People that trade actually affect the market, just as if you buy a lot of stock in a company, that stock in that company goes up. Um, currencies are similar, except it takes a lot more push, a lot more trading to make the currency change um, because of the size of the market. The market is open 24 hours a day. Sunday afternoon to Friday afternoon here in the US and so that means that you don't have to worry about the market closing each day you do have to worry about it closing on Friday uh, you don't want to have open small open trades when the market closes you can but as you'll learn in later trainings it's not a very good idea because the market can jump when it opens to a different location uh, different markets are open at different times of the day um, the U.S. market is open at certain hours while you know, the U.S. is awake, whereas the Australian market is open different hours because it's daytime for them at different times. 
and we trade when the markets overlap. There's more volatility. And so when the European market and the U.S. market are open at the same time for a few hours, that there's more volatility in that, more volume moving, and better opportunities to trade. Okay, here's some of the terminology in the Forex market that you'll need to know right off the bat. Um, first of all, the market move moves in measurements called pips. Okay, so when the market goes up, it moves up in the measurements called pips. When it drops, it drops in pips. Um, lots are the currencies are purchased in units called lots. So if we compare this to stocks, pips are like shares. You buy a certain number of points, and lots are actually the shares. You buy it in shares, and uh, the pips are basically the points. The market moves up and down. Profit, profit is captured. Um, pips, number of lot, times the number of lots traded. And loss is the lost pips times the number of lots traded. So if you traded 10 lots at a dollar a piece, and you lost 10 pips, in the market, then you would have lost $100. Um, but we should talk positive. Uh, you can gain the same $100 on the flip side. How to make money? Well, using tools and skills, we work to predict and capture changes and fluctuations in the exchange rate between two countries. I mentioned this earlier. Um, so if we anticipate based on our analysis, our technical analysis, our fundamental analysis that the US dollar is going to gain in value over the Canadian dollar for some reason, whether it's oil prices or we see a, a long standing trend, then if we can if we expect that to continue um, or to start gaining value against the Canadian dollar, we would buy the US dollar versus the Canadian dollar. For example, um I expect the British pound to get stronger than the US dollar for, for some reason. There's many reasons. That's a whole part of the learning how to trade foreign currencies, figuring out those reasons. So I will buy five lots or contracts or what you would call shares in the stock market. I'll buy five lots of the great British pound US dollar. If the market moves 10 pips in my favor, which is one tenth of a cent, and I multiply the 10 times the five, then I make $50. All right. The Great British Pound moves about 100 to 150 pips a day. That fluctuates in and out of seasons. So sometimes it's 75, sometimes it's 200. Um, if the market moves about 150 pips a day, all we have to do is figure out which way it's going to move next. All right, let's do a little comparison between the stock market and the Forex market. First of all, the stock market is non-transparent. There's a lot of things that are happening um, that we don't know about until it's too late to figure out. Um, there's limited access to information. Um, it's only open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily, Eastern Time, and it's over uh, 40,000 stocks to choose from. So there's a lot of different stocks you have to do your research on to figure out which ones are the best trades. Uh, there's low liquidity problems, um, so it's hard to get your money out of the stock market sometimes. Um, accounting scandals, subject to price slippage, um, so it might not uh, honor your your stop losses, your take profits, your levels, um, trade execution delays, and extra commissions and fees. Uh, as compared to the forex market, we have real real time access to to information. It's open 24 hours a day, so you can work during the day and trade in the evening, or the other way around. Um, you can have there's only six major pairs control 90% of the market. Right, 90% of the market controlled by six. I focus on those six plus a couple of exotic pairs, including the, involving the Japanese yen. Uh, I don't have to study 40,000 different stocks. Uh, the market is too big to manipulate with any level of effectiveness. Um, there have been countries that have tried to push their, you know, throw a lot of money into their currency and push it up, and it does something for a little bit during the day, and then it levels right back off to where it was. And uh, so basically they threw that away. Um, and it's virtually unlimited liquidity. There's always somebody buying when you're selling, or there's always somebody selling when you're buying because the market is so big. And we can deal with and we enjoy instantaneous execution. When you click to enter a trade, it happens, and you're set. 
All right, let's move on here. Let's talk about brokers. Um, trades are placed through a broker. Um, there are many brokers to choose from. Some of the things to look for in a broker um, before you get started is longevity. You want to you know, do your due diligence, check out these brokers. Don't go with the ones that have started up just a week ago. Um, how long have they been around? There's uh, reviews on them. Um, the spread, the lower the spread, the better. Now, the spread is a word that you don't understand yet, but it's basically how much it costs to get in and out of a trade. So pay attention to that. Uh, minimum account size. Um, if you're a small-time trader and you're looking at doing some, you know, if you want to trade a $500 or $1,000 account, then some some brokers don't allow you to trade less than 2000 or $5,000. So keep that in mind. Demo accounts are available from almost every broker, so that's not really an issue, but make sure. Um, some brokers pay charge extra commissions and fees. Um, they have uh, different ways to collecting um, or charging you for, for what they're doing as a broker. And uh, most brokers, not all, but most brokers have free charting software, so make sure that whoever you're looking at um, does use that. All right, let's take a look at a chart. This is just a random chart from a few years ago. Uh, it just makes a good example. This is what we call a candlestick chart. All these things are candlesticks, and we'll learn more about candlesticks in later videos and trainings. But this is a representation of what the global market looks like. This chart specifically is a chart of the US dollar, Canadian dollar. Uh, representing a five minute chart, which means that each one of these candles represents five minutes of fluctuation in the currency market. The smaller candles represent less movement or fluctuation. The bigger candles represent greater movement or fluctuation in the market. And so the market moves in, in trends. It flows down, and then it kind of changes direction, and then it flows up, you know, climbing and stuff like that. And so that's that. Let's take a look at an actual actual live chart. This is a uh, just a cut out of a chart I've got on video and we're gonna look. Now this is a five minute chart so each one of these candles represents five minutes but I've actually sped it up significantly so that each one of these candles is only gonna take a couple three seconds to complete. So you'll see a speed it up kind of time-lapse photography version of how the market moves. Alright let's watch here. So these candles are forming as the market gains or lowers in value over here. These are the, this is the exchange rate on the right between the two currencies. And so we can see that the market's climbing here and then it finally, because it stopped, it couldn't get any more buying pressure, it finally dropped off. And once it drops off, it, it comes down and retraces a little bit. And I'm just going to drop some more here just because that's how the market moves. Once we start heading in a direction, it likes to go that direction for a little while. So this is an example of how a chart would move, greatly sped up. And you could enter at any time in this chart. You could enter once you saw it break through a trend line or a resistance level and capture the movement of this chart. Now let's take a look here. So between the bottom of this chart at 1.0515, and 1.0565, there's a 50 pips difference. And if you had a trade that got in right here on this gray line, and you stayed in that with a dollar per trade, or a dollar per pip, and you were down here, you'd be up 25 bucks. Okay, from about 25 pips down to here. You'll pay like a two pip spread at the start to get into the trade. So you'll be down, you know, you'll be up $23. You can trade in either direction on the currency market, whether it's going down, the charts are going down, or whether the charts are going up. You just have to tell them which way you think they're going to go. All right, let's move on here. Uh, that's a good example, though. All right, here's your path to success. Um, first of all, it's just like if you're going to go be a dentist, you need to invest in yourself, put some time and training into the process. You don't want to go start working on people's teeth and expect to make a lot of money uh, without that. Um, study and trade with others. This helps a lot. Uh, get as much chart time as you can, spending time actually trading, whether they're demo trades or live trades. Uh, be disciplined to follow your rules. Every trader has to set up specific rules of how they'll trade the market and how they'll best interact.
be disciplined. That's very important. Always follow good money management practice. That's part of discipline, but this one's more specific. If you're you can know when the market's moving up and down, but if you don't follow good money management, you may not uh, be too happy with your results. Uh, plan um, and follow your plan and journal your trades. Keep track of your trades so you know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and what you can tweak. And most importantly, never give up. So that's the end of our intro to Forex. I hope it was enlightening a little bit. Check out some of our other videos um, that go in more depth. And we'll see you later.